Nathaniel's asleep. Good. I put somebody to sleep. Matthew chapter number 5. Matthew chapter number 5 verse 9. I hope you brought your Bible. I hope you read your Bible. I hope you pray. So one day you ain't gonna have your mom or daddy. It's just gonna be you. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Jesus said they're blessed. Peacemakers are blessed. And if you're going to be a peacemaker, you have to have knowledge how to have peace. America, right now, we have all kinds of problems. We have what we call ambassadors. They're supposed to make peace. People we like, people we don't like. Now, we'll say this, not everybody's going to like the decisions. There will always be problems and trials and tribulations and conflicts and miscommunications. And uh, we'll look at a few. 1 Corinthians 1.10 I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you also speak the same thing, and there be no division among you. But you'd be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. For if you have been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Cleo, that there are con uh, contentions among you. In other words, there's fighting going on. Now this I say that every one of you saith, I'm a Paul. No, I'm a Paulus. I'm a Cephas. I'm of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? People have this weird idea. Well, I'm a Baptist. I'm Episcopalian. I'm a Presbyterian. Who cares? Same thing with the Corinthian church. Some people say, well, you know, I follow Paul, I follow Apollos, I follow Cephas. I thought we were supposed to be following Jesus. Some people say, well, you know, I follow, uh, I follow different preachers. You know, I follow this preacher, I follow that preacher. Whatever he says, I do. We Christians are not to be divided. We're supposed to be one in Christ. People want us to be divided. John R. Rice, he was a big preacher. Uh, he said he didn't believe in tithing, uh, but uh, just to the local church. I, I like that. That way you can give your tithes to the sword of the Lord. Uh, he said, uh, you know, you can give your money any way you want. Well, you're supposed to give your money to the church. If you tithe, you're supposed to give your money to the church. If we have missions, we you give your money to missions. That causes division. Because the house of God doesn't send his money out the way it's supposed to. And we have Christians that way now. They don't think you need to tie to the local church. You can give it to a TV preacher, radio preacher, 
traveling evangelists. But to give it to their own church, their own pastor? No, we can't do that. And uh, there's a whole bunch of better preachers out there. I'll tell you that right now. Much better pastors. Go to their church. But if you want to come here, you stuck with me. You want to go to Joel Olstein's, you know, big mega mega church, help yourself. The devil is always trying to start division. One way is. Who are they going to be faithful to? Who are they going to support? They lose their allegiance to their pasture. Good example, you got David and Absalom, David and his boy, the people. They had David as his king, but his boy would show up every day and courthouse before they come see the king and he say hey what's the problem man why you come to see my daddy and then uh, he'd give him his big uh, political slogan you know now if I was a judge I'd rule on your side it didn't matter who it was his big political slogan was I will vote for you I will take your side and so the people split. They went to Absalom. They ran David off. They made Absalom the head. The people loved him more. When the leader left, the church, the people did follow. Why? Division. The bigger the church, the more opportunities for division. People will find any way to get out of church. Any excuse is a good excuse to get out of church. So you got division. Well, it's my money, and I'll give it any way I want. That's right. I don't care what the Bible says. I'm going to do it any way I want. Go ahead. There are three basic types of uh, conflicts, right of authority. Mm -hmm. the, the pastor's supposed to be in charge, the husband's supposed to be in charge of the family, the boss's supposed to be in charge of work. Mm -hmm. Of course, you think you're smarter than the boss, so you should be in charge. But he was smarter, he married the boss's wife. Ladies need to respect their husbands. Well, if I had so-and-so as my husband, you know, it'd be different. Yeah, but you didn't marry him. You got drunk and you married that guy. Well, if my boss wasn't an idiot, I'd follow him. Yeah, but you got that company job and now you're working for him. We also see there's an abuse of authority in a church. That, that's someone who makes themselves Lord over the authority over them. Jesus said we ain't supposed to do that. We're not supposed to have authority. Amen. We're supposed to lead. He said, you know the, the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. They are great Exercise authority upon it, but you shall not be so among you. So be great among you, let him be your minister. What are we supposed to do? Minister. Do not hurt people. Uh, I mean, just don't hurt people. And people have funny things, you know. People have different decisions of what they want to do, what kind of car they want to buy, where they want to live, where they want to go, what they want to wear. 
And a uh, pastor's job is not to go to your closet and pick out your clothes. He's not to pick out your job. He's not supposed to tell you how to act. Those are your decisions. My job is not to put you under my thumb and tell you you can do this, you can't do that. Those are your decisions. You make good decisions, praise the Lord. You make bad decisions, oh well. Men, as husbands, are supposed to minister to the family, not boss them around. I had a lady tell me, my husband won't let me come to church. I said, well, he's abusing his authority. I said, tell him you'll do anything he wants, but as long as it doesn't include sin, but I'm going to church. He said, I don't like that. Too bad. You want to go to church? You tell your husband, I'm going to church. You don't like it? Tough. Amen. By the way, wimpy men can say that too. Anybody that tells another Christian they can't worship the Lord, they're abusing their authority. i give you another. Uh, failure to exercise authority. Moses was having all the people around him. They'd stand in line day and night. His father-in-law had to come in, step in, tell him, why don't you do this? Put somebody in charge over the ten and some over the hundreds and the fifties and the thousands and so forth. And the big problems you have. Somebody has to be in charge of the big problems. Somebody has to be in charge of the little problems. My wife asked me the same thing. What would you like to eat tonight? I do not care. Whatever you want to make. You want to make some, whatever. I don't care. You know, somebody has to be in charge of the major decisions and somebody's got to be in charge of the little decisions. The apostles, they had problems. The Grecians came and said, uh, y'all ain't taking care of the widows. Mm -hmm. They were complaining because the widow women were being overlooked. It wasn't true, but they wanted to have a squabble in the church. And he said, the widow women are being overlooked, so the apostles took seven men, prayed, put them in charge. Why? Somebody's got to be in charge. Somebody has to be in charge. You have a complaint, you have a, a respectful appeal, you can't get any satisfaction with people in authority, you know, then you're supposed to see the pastor. Why? At least gossip, petty jealousy, turf battles, resentment, bitterness, or murmuring spread. Conflicts happen that way. People will get upset at one another. Someone will abuse their authority. Now, I usually try to let things work out. Most of the time they do. Once in a while, you got to jump in. And God said, I made you pastor. Now take out your sword and get to whacking. And uh, I was going to church, and most of the time, uh, uh, you know, God took care of everything. But did you know that sometimes wives get angry? 
and that husband sometimes get angry. And sometimes women are right. I remember a man, he was having a heart attack, and the wife said, go to the hospital. He put it off, and sure enough, he was having a heart attack. She was right, he was wrong. Sometimes you got to listen to your mate. If you're going to be in charge, you also got to be willing to listen. You got to listen. And uh, most of us would say we're not prejudiced. But we have a tendency to grow up, grow up and uh, group, group up with people of like minds based on looks, personality, education, type of entertainment, mm -hmm. balls, but the Bible says that's not the way it should be. Peter was acting two-faced at Antioch. He'd hang out with the people of Antioch. And when then the Jews showed up, he wouldn't hang out with the people of Antioch. He'd hang out with the people of the Jews. Mm. He was two-faced. He'd eat pork chops that the Jews weren't supposed to eat mm. with the Antiochs. And then when the Jews showed up, he'd act another way. Paul had to get in his face and tell him, hey, you can't be doing that. You cannot be acting two-faced. Mm -hmm. Least you cause division. Peter didn't know any better. He ain't that smart of a preacher. He's just a preacher. You know, people think preachers are smart. Uh, I hate to pop your little bubble, but sometimes they're not. Sometimes all they're supposed to do is Preach the Word of God. Now, it'd be nice if they were smart. It would have been nice if Peter hadn't have done that. It would have been nice if he hadn't have caused this conflict that I don't know how long would last. But he wasn't acting, he wasn't too smart. He just thought, this is the way I act. I, I notice that when people get on the phone in the middle of the night and they're talking to their sweetheart, they'll say stuff that they would never say to their face. They'd never say it. You know why? They don't got to see them. I hope that makes a little sense to you. From whence comes wars and fighting among you? Come they not hence even from your lust that you war in your members? James describes the church members at war. They're fighting each other. Uh, he said, she said, they're both fighting. Somebody's got to pick a side. Are you on their side? Are you on my side? Do you know what I say? I really don't care. <clears throat> our desires become our idols, what we want. We care about more what we want than anything else. We're willing to sacrifice our mate, our church, our children mm -hmm. to fulfill our lust. Mm -hmm. Peacemakers, on the other hand, bring peace. They're willing to give up stuff. I mean, we're willing to give up some things. Peacemakers are willing to give up a few things. Mm -hmm. But in reality, there are some that say they're peacemakers, but in reality, they're not. If thou far bear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, 
and those that are, are ready to be slain. If thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, does it not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he, not he, render to every man according to his works? Uh, we call that denial. Denial. We lie to ourselves. We are self-deceiving. We tell ourselves we are real sweet guys. I'm the nicest person I know. Even when you're facing an angry mate, child, parent, child, church member, you just keep on denying it. There's no problem. There's no problem. There's problem. But you just want to deny. You can also run from it. A lot of church members run from it. Problem in church? Well, preacher, you know, uh, I'm going to stop coming to this church because, you know, uh, God's led me to another church. No, he didn't. He just didn't want to handle the fight. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to contest the problem. You're avoiding the issue, the conflict. It happens in marriage all the time. I mean, all the time. How? You know, I don't blame somebody taking off for a day or half a day. I don't quit, uh, misquote me on this, but I, I mean, cool off a little bit. Uh, but physical harm is wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just plain wrong. I wouldn't put up with it. But yet some people will deny they got problems in their marriage. Then there's suicide. That's when you have no hope. Mm -hmm. There was a young lady. Mama walked in the door to the young lady's, to her daughter's door, and there was this young lady on, this young man on top of his daughter. And the young lady was ashamed. She laughed, cut her wrist, and died. She didn't want the shame of her family knowing she was a whore. It'd be better just to get right than to commit suicide. I can tell you that right now. Amen. Amen. That's a coward's way out. You can, uh, you can fake peace. Mm -hmm. I love you, brother. No, you don't. You hate the son. You hate that guy. Mm -hmm. You can be a, a denier. Oh, ain't nothing wrong between me and them. Mm -hmm. You can flee. Mm -hmm. You can commit suicide. But those are all peace. Faking methods. Mm -hmm. Then you have other folks. We call them attack response. The first one is assault. Mm -hmm. They will assault you physically, verbally, financially. They're not a real peacemaker. But they're going to try to get any penny out of you that they can. Instead of saying, well, you know, they're having a hard time. I think I'll help them out. No. No. They're going to abuse you. I've had one or two preachers pull a gun on me. I had a church uh, 
take away a salary off of a pasture. Yeah, they really do pay pastures to salaries. That's why I got a job. In marriage, same way. Instead of being a peacemaker, they have violent tempers, physically abused, abusive. They throw things around, break things. Some people, that's the only way they know how to handle conflict. It ain't just, it ain't just the, the ladies that do stuff like that. Men do that too. They get violent. And then there's some men that will not do their marriage vows. There are some women that will not do their marriage vows. Why? Well, there's a problem. And so I'd rather have the problem for five years. Every missionary I know all started the same way. I hear the same story, same sad story. Well, my wife didn't do this for five years. Problems. We just going to deny and make dirty faces at each other, take things around like little whining babies. They throw a fit. Then you have what I call litigation. That's two people that have had it with one another. They've gone so far. They finally said, you know what, I'm sick of it, I'm going to court. Could be any one of the reasons, gossip, slander, charitable judgment. Nothing worse than taking your dirty laundry out and letting people see it. And people do it all the time. The Bible says, do any of you have a matter against another? Go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints. He said, why are you going before them? I will say, it's easy preaching, but it's hard living. Some people, they'll get to the point, well, I quit. I quit. I know several, several couples all said the same thing. I quit. I don't want to be with you no more. I quit. Okay. Then, of course, there's murder. We're not supposed to murder with anybody. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out then, then thou shalt uh, pay the uttermost farthing. The root of murder is anger and hatred. The Lord spoke of broken uh, impersonal relationships as legal disputes. Now most people never get to the point of physical murder, but they'll murder somebody in their heart. I know a man that was stole all the files of his company he used to work for. He was a Christian. He took all the big accounts he could. And uh, the man he used to work for well, was a Christian. He had fallen on hard times, told his pastor. Fixing to cut my good, you know, cut uh, my cost of goods to my customers. I don't care if I bankrupt me. I'm gonna make the, the man go out of business. 
That's not her.